Hi, so in this example, we're going to go ahead and find the surface of a revolution um, around the x-axis given a function. So we can see right away that here the function is a line. and over this particular interval. So, and then we're gonna re um, revolve it around the x-axis. Okay, and then of course we wanna note that we can always round um, the results to three decimals. So in this case, um, I would go ahead and draw it. I feel like it's not as complicated of a function. Sometimes if the polynomial or the function given is quite complex. I like to put it into a, you know, a, gener a graph generator. But here I feel like I want to practice this too because I want to be able to develop skills of visualization, right? All right, so let's go ahead and graph. I have graphing paper here and it looks like because the interval is one to three, I'm going to have um, just that first quadrant. So let me just draw that first quadrant and I'm going to draw it pretty tall since um, I can see that the ordered pair at one, so f of one is six times one plus five, which is 11. So it'll start at one eleven, and then f of three will be six times three plus five equals um, 18 plus five is 23. So it'll be 323. So we just wanna make sure we have enough room so we can go ahead and do that. Um, let me go ahead and draw this. Okay. And then maybe I'll make this like one and then two and then three and so on. So it just, we can see it. Again, we want to make sure we identify where that X axis is going. And then um, we'll go ahead and maybe do these. Um, I would do these in maybe fives. Right, like 5, 10, 15, 20, and then 25, and so on. So, here, um, well, we're gonna go ahead and put in, um, we could do zero, we could actually just start graphing like zero, five, um, five the y intercept, and then up six um, over one. So, that would be 111, right? Um, we could do it for two, six times two is 12, 12 plus five is 17. So we could do it right there. And then we can see that three and 23. And then I would go ahead and just connect the dots. And um, I'm using Notability so the line straightens out for me. So the next thing I'm gonna do is make the barriers between one and three. And that's because that's the interval um, they gave me right here. So I'm not taking everything. I'm just taking what's there um, given in my interval. So there's that piece. So if I wanted to, um, now that's the piece I'm having. So I could just shade this if I wanted to just shade it some gray. You know, because what we're doing is just calculating that area. Basically, if I was going to paint this solid. It's not a solid yet, right? It's just like the little graph, the area part. We want to revolve this around the x-axis. So essentially, it's going to look identical, right? So if this is going to be 111, the other point down here would be um, 5, 10, the same right, about right here, right? So I usually just dash it through. The 3, 23, that would be um, 5, 10, 15, 20, and then 23, and about here. And then you could just dash it. So you can kind of see the distance you're going to go. And then you can go ahead and start to turn it. Okay, and then you're going to go ahead and connect these two dots. And you could do it in a line. So I'll just do um, a nice dash like that. Okay, and then you can kind of see where we're going here with this. So now you can see the solid. No, it almost looks like a cup, right? One of those like small wine cups, plastic cups <laughs> you get sometimes at parties. <laughs> 
And it's like, if I was to paint this, right, how, what would be that total area that I'd be painting, right? So I'm not only now painting just a wall, like a two dimensional, right? Now I can revolve this wall around the x-axis and get like a full solid. So it's a full solid, it's like clay, right? Heavy clay or something like that. And you're going to paint over it. Um, so the formula from our notes is right here. So now we can, we not only see it, but now we can connect the dots, right? We can do the calculus algebraic part and can have, have a visualization of what we're doing versus one or the other. Now that we're in calculus too, we always want to visualize and connect it to our algebra. The geometry is really, really important now to always bridge them together. Um, and then here we can go ahead and put the surface area. Let me go ahead and change that to a solid line. And so now the surface area is equal to 2 pi times the definite integral in the interval of 1 to 3 of f of x, or f of x was the line 6x plus 5, times the square root of 1 plus the first derivative of f. Well, we know these pretty well, right? The derivative of a line is just its slope. So that'll just be 6 squared and then dx. Okay, and then um, it's all about now just really just a simple integration, right? So we see that we get 2 pi definite integral from 1 to 3 of 6x plus 5 times the square root of 37 dx. Since this is a number coefficient, I'm going to go ahead and bring that out as the constant multiple rule and put it out there with the 2 pi. So that way we get 2 pi times the square root of 37, definite integral 1 to 3 of the line 6x plus 5 dx. And we know how to integrate this, right? We can almost blink and do it. So there we get 2 pi square root of 37 times, and now let's go ahead and integrate. We get 6 times x squared over 2 plus 5x evaluated from 1 to 3. And we'll go ahead and reduce that 2 in the 6. So now we're going to get 2 pi square root 37. And then I'm going to put a bracket and I'm going to do that for a uh, fundamental theorem of calculus. I'm going to subtract at those endpoints. So I'm going to have parentheses. 3 times 3 squared plus 5 times 3, parenthesis, minus, now it's 1 squared, 3 times 1 squared plus 5 times 1, bracket. And we just still have the coefficient 2 pi square root 37. I would not round until the very end. There's just no need to. Um, I would definitely just keep going and practice my good integration skills. And we can easily see here that we get something like 27 plus 15 minus 3 minus 5, which ends up being 2 pi times the square root of 37 and then times what we get is 27 plus 15 minus 3 minus 5 and we go ahead and get 34. So really you can put in the calculator 34 times 2 is 68 pi square root of 37. And when you put that in the calculator, you get an approximation of 1299.4 um, four, five, zero. And, um, so that's just the area. So area. And so, um, the surface area of a solid revolution, like we're painting the outside, that means it's square units. Now we don't know the units. It wasn't provided. So we usually just put like unit squared or square units. And we can check up here that in fact, that was the correct answer.